From the city to rural North America, this is Rural America Live, connecting the people who grow America's food and fiber with those who enjoy it. Call in, let's talk. It's Rural America Live. The growing season just around the corner. More and more producers are learning about the importance of good soil health. They're also learning about the importance of proper balance of nutrients needed for a good foundation when that seed goes in the ground. Good evening and welcome to this edition of Rural America Live. I'm Mark Oppel. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're joined once again by the great folks at Monty's Plant Food Company. We're going to be talking a lot about the influence Monty's products are having and have had on soil health and the success stories that farmers and ranchers are seeing in their fields around the country. We'll also be talking about what growers can do this season to get higher yields, higher return on their investment. Commodity prices a lot different than a year ago this time and becoming a major concern for many growers across the country as they enter this new season. With me in studio tonight, a great friend from Monty's, Joe Dedman, back with us. He is their vice president of agronomy and from AgView FS. They're from North Central Illinois, Jim Stetson and Chris Brown joining us as well. Tonight, Monty's will be introducing two brand new products, the very first time anywhere on any media right here on RFD TV and Rural America Live, two brand new products this year and tonight you're hearing about it for the first time so welcome to real america live all of you thank you thank Joe, good to here. have you back again too yes, it's always it's good to see here. you i want to get back to you in a minute yes. but i want to meet our good friends from agview fs yes. uh, and then uh, jim start with you talk about uh, agview and your background well agview fs we're a uh, five county territory in uh, north central illinois um, we have eight full service agronomy locations we also do energy products um, we have uh, 14 full-time crop specialists that are with us, um, Chris being one of them, mm -hmm. and uh, we're out to be the, the best uh, agriculture provider in our, in our territory, and uh, um, we, we're looking to do everything possible to be that. Absolutely. Tell us about your background. Your Illinois is home for you. Yep, Illinois is home. AgVFS is home. I'm from, born and raised in, in that territory, currently live there as well. Um, so I've been around farming, been around the territory all my life. So. Um, Homegrown, there to stay. So, Very good. Yeah. And you were sharing before going on the air, I hope it's all right to mention that two youngsters in your family, the yep. Stetson house was <laughs> hopping at Christmas time. Yeah, yeah, with a four-year-old and then a nine-month-old first Christmas. It's, uh, it was pretty special. So <laughs> yeah. looking forward to those, many more of those down the road. Congratulations. Yep. Thank yeah, you. great. Yep. Great to have you with us. Yep. Thank Chris, you. how about you? Uh, Illinois is home for you as well. Yeah, I started out a little bit further west than Jim did, uh, Lexus, Illinois. I went out through the Navy, came back, uh, Got back interested in agriculture, uh, got back, uh, mm -hmm. done with college, and uh, w ended up in uh, that north central Illinois with AgView. Been there the last four years, working with growers in my area uh, out of the Varna location, servicing about 25 to 30,000 acres there. Wow. And by the way, congratulations and thank you for your service to our country. We always yes. want to uh, recognize our military men and women when they appear in our program. So we appreciate yes. that very much. Thank you. And good to hear from you. Jim, back over to you. Maybe some of the issues that you and Chris are seeing in your part of Illinois, these producers are up against. Yeah, well, uh, we've had been very fortunate in the, in the last few years. We've had some high yields, um, but we realize there's some commodity prices, uh, some volatility there, mm. volatility with, with the input prices. So. Just helping um, stay in front of our growers and help them, uh, you know, make the best decisions and, and the most calculated decisions to be the most profitable that they can be, mm -hmm. and realize there's still a crop to be grown, and uh, there's there's a lot of lot of bushels to grow, and and th and that's how that's how that's the name of the game, and that's how we do business. So one of the things you mentioned earlier today, I think you said, Mark, I want to I want to focus kind of things like soil compaction. What about that? Yeah, well, um, you know, soil compaction. There's a lot of corn on corn in our area. Um, and there's a lot of tillage, so so there's um, you know sometimes there's not the ideal conditions to get out there and and do that um, do the tillage work. So there's some compaction um, issues that show up every year, and we want to make sure that uh, you know there, if there's something out there that we can we can provide to help our farmers in, in that process. Yeah. we want to bring those forward. And Chris, you 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 alluded to that too. It, it's some, yeah. a compaction is something that really, along with soil health, is it's something very important. Yeah, it's been something that. Uh, Varying year to year, depending on the winters we've had, uh, how prevalent that shows up in the, in the fields. But uh, as farmers continue to, equipment size gets larger, mm -hmm. 
those compaction layers are going to be there and we need to learn how to deal with yeah. those. So it's more than just soil health. Joe, uh, yeah. uh, you brought two great guests along with you yes. and I. We're looking forward to hearing Absolutely. more from them. But you and I have done this show many, many times. Uh, and this has been something very important to you for many, many years yes. is soil health. It really has. I, I feel like that uh, that's been a part of the puzzle that farmers go out and do every year. And that might be the missing piece that they haven't focused on. And we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, magazine articles, a lot of different topics that's coming up talking about soil health and, and really soil health encompasses a whole lot more than just thinking about earthworms mm -hmm. or uh, microbes that's out there in the soil. So. And then on a personal note, uh, we heard from Jim and Chris and their backgrounds and a lot of new viewers and listeners yeah. uh, each and every month on our program. And yes. maybe this is the last time you were on. Just soil health has been part of your professional background it, for a yes, long time. Yes, it has. Uh, I focused a lot on that when I was farming myself. Uh, I ran a dairy. Uh, that was a big issue. And then I came out of that, went to work for the Southern States Cooperative here in the Southeast. Uh, and that was, again, many of our focuses. And, you know, and it, we just began to learn some things about soil health that includes, you know, not only structure, uh, the soil texture, uh, the microbes, the earthworms, uh, all of those things. In fact, nutrient balance in the soil affects soil health in so many ways. And that is maybe one of the things that's limiting uh, the farmers from achieving the mm -hmm. higher yields that they want to get. So here we are, another growing season, Joe, and, and it's issues. Let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, new challenges that producers might face, not just weather, uh, certainly that's up there number one, but also uh, ways that they're looking to improve. They got to have those yields with prices where we've talked about. Yeah, and, and this fits right in with what uh, Jim and Chris is talking about. I mean, they they are in the business along with lots of other companies that want to provide their growers with the best varieties, mm -hmm. the highest yielding varieties, uh, the, the best uh, mixture of fertilizers and uh, chemicals, as, as well as foliar products to put over their crops, to allow them to achieve the maximum yield potential uh, that, that they can do through those particular varieties and in their growing conditions. So yes, farmers, every season, we see them face either new challenges or some of the old challenges and they still have not figured out how do I get around that yeah. challenge? How do I get my yields higher? And Chris and Jim both have you in your introductions kind of mentioned you want to do the best you can for, for farmers. They've got new questions every spring, mm -hmm. Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So so you know, over the course of over the course of the last uh, four or five years we've we've had a pursuit of maximum yield program where mm -hmm. we've been educating our farmers on on different ways to increase yields but also be the most profitable they can be mm -hmm. and uh, you know we've looked at fertility we've looked at you know fungicides and those kind of things plant health plant nutrition um, I think one thing that we've been overlooking um, so far is just soil health mm -hmm. and what we can do to you know uh, break down the break down residue better um, just manage manage how we uh, utilize, utilize our nutrients a little bit better mm -hmm. so um, I think I think this is kind of where uh, the Monty's products fit in fit in for us. So and and Joe, let's talk a little bit about that. Monty spends a lot of time, a lot of time. Well, that's very yes. evident from all the times you've been on our program. Yes. That to focus on soil health, as Jim talks. So let's let's talk a little yeah. bit about that. How why you know we know it's important, but let's get a little bit deeper into soil health. Well, and, and it includes so many more things than just microbes. I mean, m many times people think about just bugs in the soil and. You know, and we even have on the screen, we're talking about nutrient balance, mm -hmm. which actually relates in this particular case to uh, base saturation. So we, we focus on CEC in the soil. We focus on the base saturation okay. that makes up that soil, which is cations, positively charged nutrients. And it's, it is a true balance of that, those nutrients that can make all the difference in the world to crop yields, uh, soil health, because even your microbes, I mean, you stop to think about it a minute, um, our stomachs get upset, We're, you know, and it upsets our bugs and everything else. Well, the same thing happens in the soil if the farmer puts on the wrong kind of nutrients or not enough nutrients or the wrong, wrong balance, and it upsets that ecosystem, which also lowers the bar for him to produce a high-yielding crop. We're going to talk a little bit, a lot about it. You're going to, we're going to hear the word humix. And so mm -hmm. people that are hearing and watching our program for the first time may not have heard that name, that right. word. Right. And you have a video. Let's kind of set this thing up and, yeah. and, and help them out a little bit. We've, uh, we've actually produced a video 
that relates not only our product, but we, we bring in the whole industry. And we tell the farmers about uh, what Humix are on the marketplace and the differences there are in Humix because not all Humix are the same. And so this is what our video is about. All right, let's take a look. Farmers continue to discover the value of Humic technology and the incredible impact it has on their production. Monty's has been a pioneer in the field of Humic technology for more than 30 years. We were utilizing Humics to help farmers maximize yields before they were widely known. Our farmers have experienced unprecedented success with their crops using our Humic technology. So what are Humics and how can they have such an impact on the soil and crops? Well, it all starts with raw brown coal. This is raw brown coal. It's primarily organic matter composed of inactive, insoluble humic substances, which includes humic and fulvic acids. These substances are found in nature and have many valuable properties to soil and plants. The problem with humic acids in their natural state is that most are non-activated and of little value, which means they are not as effective to plants and soils. Now let's talk about humics in the marketplace. Most humic products on the market are not active and of little value. There's quite a bit of confusion with products and the percentage of humix. Some products may tout lower or higher percentages of humic content. So how does this percentage impact the performance of humix? There is no industry standard yet for tests that tell us how much humic acid is in a product. Different tests give different percentages, and the percentages do not tell us if the humic is in its most active state. Remember, humics in their natural state are insoluble. Don't focus on percentages. What's important is solubility. Monty's humics are highly bioactive and soluble. Some other products are spread on a field and they just sit there. They don't dissolve into the soil, meaning they are non-beneficial to your crops. Another crucial part of this science is the highly bioactive status of our humics. Monty's humics have the optimum ratios to provide for maximum success. We understand the right concentration of humic substances to maximize biological stimulation. We complement both the soil and plant because we understand the importance of that relationship. This is our advantage. Today's farmers deal with many issues that affect the health of their soil. The most significant is soil compaction. This prevents the roots from penetrating deeper in the soil, limiting access to water and important nutrients. Monty's activated humic technology helps relieve compaction and density often found in all soil types. This includes conventional and no-till farming. It is designed to improve drainage and nutrient efficiency in all soil types, even in the most extreme climate and soil conditions. It also provides more oxygen for healthy root system growth. As you can see, a simple test using corn, wheat, and soybean seeds in petri dishes show the difference Monty's can make. The seeds on the bottom were soaked in water. The seeds on the top were soaked in Monty's liquid carbon. After a few days, the difference is obvious. Plus, it's cleaner. You can mix Monty's with other products and see the compatibility and the difference. Monty's products are the ideal, clean solution farmers are looking for for healthier soil. Monty's products are designed to complement or manage your crop throughout the growing season to maximize the success of your harvest. Our proprietary humic technology is unmatched in bringing solutions to farmers. What sets Monty's apart? highly bioactive and readily available, geologically beneficial, chemically balanced, clean and soluble, tank mix flexible, beneficial to both soil and plants. Monty's, success you can see. Exactly, success you can see. Wow, that's great, Joe, that's yeah. a lot of help. So let's kind of merge that great description with the types of products that Monty's offers. Well, and that plays right into that video because we, we've tried to tell them the difference that, that our products are. They're very activated humic product. Uh, and we incorporate that into many of our other products. Some we're able to put on the label, some we're not. Mm -hmm. uh, but many of our products have that, that activated humic in it. And we see from the results of farmers are, are telling us the feedback, they're seeing exactly what that video is showing, that it's, it makes the soil different, it makes the texture different, it balances out nutrients, it releases nutrients. And, and I think probably even uh, Chris and, and Jim see that over in there. Yeah, I, was, well. I just wrote that, that down, feedback. So what are you yeah. hearing? Uh, Jim, we'll start with you. 
Well, I think, um, you know, from coming from the farmers, you know, uh, you always want some stuff to be easy. You always want stuff to come out of the machines easy. So they see this black stuff uh, in a jug that you give them, and they're like, you know, how's that going to go through the machine? Well, you dump it in, you can tell it, it comes out of the jug clean, uh, goes through a sprayer with ease, and uh, you can see the, the technology that's that's in that, um, that Monty's has really taken a step further than some of the other stuff. Because mm -hmm. we have experimented with the other stuff too, and, and you can see um, how, how much better the Monty's product is overall. How about that, Chris? What do you have to add you know, as far as feedback you're hearing? Well, guys are looking for ways to improve their soil and to be able to utilize the nutrients that they have out there. And this is one way that we can utilize the, the fertilizer that they've already put out and that's in last year's crop stover. Be able to bring that into this year's crop and be able to utilize it this year in a year where commodity prices are a little tighter. Uh, they can utilize get some value out of that sure. silver that's there. Absolutely. Joe, uh, if we could maybe just a minute or so and kind of walk through, I would say, just kind of a, a soil biology. I know it's something mm -hmm. that's close to you. you when you right. go to these trade shows, you right. love to spend the time with yeah. producers. So let's do a minute or so here with, you know, a little bit more in detail and let's talk about the, what's going on in that right. soil. Right. Well, there's, there, of course, there's so many microbes in the soil, uh, we can't count them all. In fact, Many of the people tell us if we could weigh it out somehow out of an acre of soil, it would weigh as much as a cow. But it, it, that's an e a living ecosystem. And so the farmers really, uh, as part of this puzzle of soil health, is once we begin to figure out how to feed that soil health mm -hmm. and how to maximize the soil health, they're going to see so many more things happen to the crops that they plant, uh, the health of the crop, the reduction in insects, reduction in weeds, uh, it all goes together and it ties together when we balance out uh, that soil. Earthworms will play a, a huge role in it too because one of the ways that we uh, ask farmers to go out and judge the health of their soil is to dig up a square foot of soil and count how many earthworms in it. And as you can see on the screen, that earthworms contribute a tremendous amount of uh, fertility back into the soil as well as contributing to that soil health system, that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that is a good barometer if you want to count your earthworms, that you can see how healthy your soil yeah, is. Yeah, so I, I think a lot of uh, people would not be aware of all the, all the activity uh, yes. going on under the soil. That's you, right. You've said before, we spend a lot of time, and rightfully so, taking care of what's above the ground yes. for that crop, whatever sure. crop it might be. Uh, but what yeah. we're talking about is as important or more, what's going it, on below it, that. It truly, truly is, yes. We want you to enjoy or to join our conversation, by the way. We invite you to call in any time from now to the end of our program. Uh, our toll-free lines are open now asking questions of uh, Joe, Chris, or Jim. And we have other guests, Reggie, coming in here from the Carolinas. So you folks out east, you'll have someone from your area. But any time, 877-731-6733. Lines open right now. Give us a call. We'd like to hear from you and get you ready for the 2015 growing season. 877 877- 731-6733, whether watching RFD TV or listening to us on Sirius XM Channel 80, that toll-free number is the same. Another video here to help us out tonight. Uh, explain what we're going right. to see here, Joe. Well, this is a video from actually Jim and Chris's area, another location uh, that's a little further south than their location. But uh, the, the manager there is Dale Brookins, and he has actually used uh, our, our carbon product, which is in Illinois, it's a humic product, but he used it to uh, balance out uh, the burn effect of nitrogen, which we've actually talked about on the mm -hmm. show before. And Dale's got some great information here too. All right, so let's take a look. My name is Dale Brookins, and I'm an area manager for Southern FS. I've been in the Southern Illinois part of the country here, and I've been with the company around 28 years. The predominant product we've been using on an extensive basis has been the uh, Monty's Liquid Humic, which was, we've been using um, extensively on wheat. We're actually using liquid uh, humic on two different uh, crops in our area. We use it predominantly on wheat, but we've also been using it on soybeans also. So the reason we started using the liquid humic is because uh, we have a large amount of wheat acres in our area, and we're broadcasting liquid 32 over the top of wheat. And at that time, we was getting a severe burn on our wheat when we were spraying um, herbicides and also the 32% at the same time, we were seeing severe burns. So that's the time we started looking at other products. And uh, the one we chose was Monty's. The very first year we used it was on a few acres. 
and it did really, 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 really well. So the next year, which had been this past spring, early spring, we decided to use it on that. And at that time, we seen no burn on wheat from applying this product with herbicides and the 32 at the same time. I think the, some of the advantage of it, the, the product's easy to handle, and we can handle that in many different forms. We handle it in two and a half gallon containers, or we handle that in many bulk. So the product's easy to handle, it mixes well. We don't have any type of uh, pr uh, problems when we mix it with any type of her herbicide or liquid fertilizer. We never have any types of problems with that. So from a retailer's point of view, that's, that's pretty handy that we don't have to have those type of problems. I think you, you should feel relaxed and have some assurance if you're gonna use the Monty's Liquid Humic because uh, we've seen it used the past two or three years and we've used it on several thousands of acres and we've seen excellent results. Plant health, we've seen it when we've had extra increase in bushels. We've seen no trouble with uh, mixing it, contamination problems, those types and it's also a product that's very easy to use. On wheat alone, we're looking on a return on investment. We're spending around um, 14 or 15 bucks an acre, and we're getting around about $84 in return for that. So I'd say that's a pretty good return on your investment any day. We've used a, a couple different of their products in the past for some foliar treatment, which was a 215-15 and an 816-8, and we've had excellent results of this but we've heard they've got a new product come out, which is Agrihance, and we're looking forward to using that in the future. Well, a great information there and a, a great customer that you're well familiar with. We mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, uh, Joe, that we're going to be introducing two brand new products tonight. Monty's yes. has picked RFD TV and Rural America Live, and we yes. thank you for that. The first one, I'll let you, I'm not going to take away your fanfare. <laughs> well, it's a new product uh, called Breakdown. Uh, we did this in cooperation with uh, Growmark and, and some, some of the FS locations. Uh, it is a crop residue management product uh, to help break down the residue that's out there the farmers are fighting, and, and we can let Jim and uh, Chris comment on that. Yeah, it's called Breakdown. You're hearing it for the first time. Uh, Jim, what do you think about that? Yeah, this was just released to us here recently, so we're excited about it. I think, uh, you know, being, being an FS and being a farmer-owned cooperative and Growmark being a regional uh, distributor of ours, um, this product is specifically formatted for our region, so I think it's I think it's exciting because you know it's it's got a good name, it does what it says, so um, you know it, it's it's easy it's easy to get out there, and I think people will be drawn to it. All right, breakdown, Chris, you ready for that? I'm ready. Uh, I think we've had a lot of customers asking for something like this to because they want to deal with that that stover leftover from corn on corn and con continuous corn. Uh, they want to have a way to utilize or, or to utilize that stover as well as to get rid of it for mm -hmm. so they have good planting the following year, soil temperatures warming up. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be good for us, I think. Very good. We are moving through the hour here. Uh, you're going to be leaving us, uh, Jim, for the remainder of the hour, but we want to make sure you have a chance for some final thoughts. So great to have you here. Thanks for joining us for this time and uh, your your thoughts to our yeah, viewers well, and listeners. Well, thanks for having us. I think, uh, you know, the Monty stuff and, and the things that they're promoting with soil health and, and residue breakdown are important to us and important to our long-term longevity in our business and, and as well as the farmers to, to really pay attention to the uh, soil health and uh, maximize the nutrient utilization. Yep, Very absolutely. good. Great. Thanks for being here. Yep, thanks. And have a great growing season over yeah. there in Illinois. <laughs> we will. All right, and we're talking the entire country here now. Uh, Chris will be leaving as well, but he'll be coming back a bit later in the hour. But our telephone lines are open. We want to hear from you, 877-731-6733. Rural America Live continues our friends from Monty's Plant Food Company right after this. Welcome back to Rural America Live with Monty's Plant Food. I'm Mark Oppel. Telephone lines are open, 877-731-6733. Before the break, we were talking about Monty's products and their many uses, a variety of different crops, also about successes the dealers like AgView FS in Illinois have seen. By the way, we want to, if you want more information about their website, more specifically, it's agviewfs.com. Dot com. And we thank Chris and Jim for being our guests in the program again, uh, Joe. Great, great guest to join us here. We're going to be taking your calls during the remainder of this hour as well. We know the lines are ringing, and if you get a busy signal, please keep trying. We want to hear from you and hopefully help you uh, as you enter this new growing season. I want to introduce Reggie Baker, a grower from North Carolina, to our program as we continue through this hour. Reggie, welcome. 
Thank you for uh, the opportunity to be here with you. Great to uh, meet you earlier today. Give our uh, listeners and viewers a little bit of background. Uh, is uh, the Carolinas are home for you? Yes, sir. Uh, we farm in uh, Monroe, North Carolina, which is about six miles from north of the South Carolina state line. Mm -hmm. We farm about uh, 2,000 acres of uh, winter wheat, 2,500 acres of soybeans, 1,000 acres of corn, and 225 head of a uh, cow-calf operation in uh, both North and South Carolina. Looks like a family picture there that we're seeing those on the radio as a great looking family group here in front of some really good looking corn. Yes, yes sir. I, uh, I farm with my dad and brother and uh, we're all there all the time with each other. We're, we're going to get some telephone calls here, Reggie, but uh, talk about your experience briefly with the Monty's Plant Food Company. We've been uh, using the Monty's Liquid Carbon for, uh, this will be our fifth year going into 2015. Mm -hmm. And we actually apply the liquid carbon in front of every crop that we, uh, that we grow and we really like the results we're seeing. Um, the soil compaction, the, uh, just the, the life that's in the soil, the uh, breaking down the residue so much faster. Uh, mm -hmm. It really is a lot easier to plant because um, we're no-till, it's easier to plant when you have something that's breaking that residue down. And you mentioned all crops. We have as maybe viewers and listeners wondering, well, will it work on this? Will it work on that? Uh, everything you grow in, the, in your farm in the Carolinas, you use Monty's plant food on every acre. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every, whenever we're doing our burn down, the liquid carbon is in every tank load. Very good. We'll learn more about that. Let's go to our telephones uh, and thank you all for calling. If you're just joining us, it's all, it's Rural America Live and you're a very important part of that. Our toll free lines are open to hear your questions, answer your questions, 877-731-6733. We're going to Mississippi for our first day. Ricky, thanks for calling. Welcome. I was wondering if that stuff would work on hay land. Both right. Bermuda, Bahia grass and stuff like that. All right, hay ground, grass. Yes, Joe? yes, absolutely, Ricky. Uh, thank you for the call. Uh, if you visit our website, which is, uh, of course, on, uh, we'll give out here at the end of the show, but we have some uh, information on there about uh, uh, Bahia as well as Bermuda grass. It really does uh, stimulate that root system that's underneath that, and you will get better uh, production and better results out of that grass mm -hmm. and growing that. Another example of using it on any product, yeah. any, any, you know, you're yeah. talking about soil health. Yeah. So people that are fruits and vegetables. Yes, soil health contributes to anything grown in the soil, really. Let's talk a little bit about Joe, uh, Reggie's area there. We, we were certainly with Chris and Jim in, mm -hmm. in Illinois in the central part of the country, uh, but you see the same kind of results that they were experiencing and sharing in the southeast. Yes, we do. Uh, I mean, if soils are different, of course, across our country. Uh, Reggie probably even can mention he may have some sandy soils or some very hard clays or whatever that we have all in different locations across the mm -hmm. country. That's the beauty of this activated humic product, that it will work on any soil type anywhere. Uh, some will take longer to fix and, and increase the soil health than others, but it still does the job. It, it will do that to, to promote your uh, soil and give right. it better health. Ricky, thanks for the call. Let's go from Mississippi to Indiana. Becky is anxious to talk to Polly. She always likes those folks from the Hoosier State. Hi, Polly. Hi. Are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. All right. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead. You're on with Joe and Reggie. Well, I was calling about uh, soil compaction, and it looks like you guys know all about compacting. Um, I had a question about the application rate that I would use for my marijuana plants. <laughs> Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk, let's talk about compaction. Uh, thanks for the call, Polly. Yeah. Uh, but he did, you know, we did spend some time with yes. Jim and Chris about compaction. Right. And there's a lot of folks, because the machinery is heavier. Yes. Talk about that, Joe. Well, machinery is heavier, uh, different harvest conditions. Uh, you know, it contributes either to more compaction issues. So no matter what kind of compaction issues, whether you have it in your garden or out in your field, this is what our product is designed to do, is to penetrate the soil increase that soil health, which of course our, my, our biology, our ecosystem is working in conjunction with that to help relieve compaction issues. And mm -hmm. so all I can say is it, it, the, the more compacted it is, 
then the more product you should probably put on at a heavier rate to, to relieve that compaction. I want to stay in the southeast, if we might, here, Joe, a little bit, because you you had trials all over the country. Yes. Uh, that's one great thing about Monty. Let's talk about that that southeast uh, and maybe North Carolina, mm -hmm. North Carolina State University, in fact. Yes, right? yeah, North Carolina State. In fact, we've had uh, some video footage on here before from uh, Dr. Ron Heinegger. Uh, Dr. Ron just released to me about a couple of weeks ago, actually, uh, about four different trials on corn, and we have averaged them together just to, to give you an average. But the same thing holds true is regardless, and, and we, I've told you this in the past on, on, on other shows, anything we've added the liquid carbon to, even a, a competitive starter product, in this case it's 10270, was used at 20 gallons per acre, and, we, and then we go over here and add uh, liquid carbon to it and we had a 27 bushel increase just by adding carbon to that starter. Uh, that was one trial in 2012 and 13 and then uh, two other trials in 2013 and 14 we had a 26 bushel increase by just adding the liquid carbon to the regular programs that the farmers are using out there yeah. those starters. You know and we, uh, and Reggie are you seeing these kind of results in, in your farm and other uh, neighbors that you're talking to that are using Monty's as well? Yes, sir. And I think that it also starts from the very beginning because when you use it and you get it in your system and you're able to get that residue broken down early, whenever, whenever, whenever you run that planter across the ground, you're going to get a better stand initially. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a better root mass, quicker, healthier. And so much of what we learn now about your yield is determined early on. Yeah. So if you've got the soil health right when you start, and this liquid carbon does that, then I think that's really where you're getting the benefit mm -hmm. in the yield. Mm -hmm. you, uh, we'll take another call here in a minute, but something I want to, you said something that triggered another question for me is that uh, if someone's not used Monty's plant food products, liquid carbon, the first year, and, and they're trying to rebuild the soil. What I think I heard you say is that year, you see improvement every year. That soil gets a little more healthy. You're not going to see that. Yes, sir. You might see it. You're going to see an improvement. <coughs> I guess what I'm saying is every year, you're gonna, the improvement will continue to, sh to, to show itself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As soon as you get it on there, you'll find that it's really kind of fast acting, that it kind of gets in there. You can dig the plants up, which we have, and have had slides with that. Mm -hmm. And the roots are really healthy, but it's no different than, than the, the soil health is no different than our personal health. If you take care of your body, mm -hmm. then it'll take care of you. If you take care of that soul, then it's going to take care of your crop. Mm -hmm. He's been hearing you, Joe, <laughs> yeah, didn't he? Apparently. <laughs> He's been yeah. listening. And good. That's a good thing. <laughs> Let's go to Ohio. Leah, thank you for calling tonight. Welcome to Rural America Live. Hi. Um, I had a question. Um, I have a backyard garden. And um, you said something about earthworms uh, has an indication of how healthy your garden is. And I don't have a whole lot of those anymore as years have um, progressed. So I was wondering, what could I do to kind of help, um, besides, you know, applying monitoring, to kind of help improve my uh, my garden health? Because my yield is not as good as it used to be anymore. And I think the bugs has a lot to do with that and less earthworms also. So mm -hmm. help me out. Well, for many for many gardeners, of course, they like to incorporate like leaves and as well as their their uh, residue of what they've been growing. But again, it's back to adding this humic product that's activated will contribute. Uh, really, what we do is we contribute to the growing uh, surroundings or the conditions that are very favorable for uh, the microbiology to replenish itself and to multiply. And you'll also see the earthworms. She she mentioned the earthworms. Yeah. We, We've had uh, many farmers would dig up their soils or gardeners and they might find five or six earthworms per square foot. Well, like in Reggie's case, he may go out in his field and dig it up and he may see in the 20s or 30s per square foot now. And that's what you want. The higher number of earthworms you could get there is a better indicator that your soil health is really improved. And, and of course, you'll see the difference in your mm -hmm. crops that you grow on. And Leah doesn't remember, doesn't realize perhaps, but uh, the history of Monty's Plant Food Company started in the backyard yeah, with, with roses, right? Yes, it did, yeah. So we started in lawn and garden and roses and uh, actually progressed into agriculture. Yeah. So 
Yeah, it'll, it'll help her garden tremendously. We're, I want to stay in the east, a video from Maryland that yes. you wanted to share tonight as well. Set yeah. that up for in, us. In fact, uh, some, of, some of our friends at the mill. Right. Uh, you know you know those as Chris well. Chris has been on yeah, the show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have a, a farmer that has a great testimony uh, from up there. That he, he talks about the, the carbon product and actually many of the things that we've discussed here tonight about compaction and other So things. we're in Maryland now with yeah, this, for this particular exactly. producer? Yes, sir. All right, let's take a look. My name is Zach Rose. I'm with Clear Meadow Farm. We're in central, north central Maryland. We farm in south central Pennsylvania and in Maryland. We farm about 8,000 acres of corn, wheat, soybeans, and barley. We have about 600 head of beef cattle. Uh, we started using Monty's uh, mainly through uh, persuasion from the mill, which is our local fertilizer dealer, and uh, I'd say we started using about five years ago. The Monty's products that we mostly started using was the carbon product. We were very pleased with the product that we started using, uh, mainly because of uh, just the increased uh, crop production we were getting out of it and just the, what we could see out of the crops on our side-by-side -side test that we did. When we applied the Monty's carbon, we did it uh, in furrow through the to totally tubular product, which is putting the, the fertilizer underneath the seed, which we thought was the best way for the seed and the roots to get to it. We have seen through using the Monty's product is uh, increased bushels, but also more than likely we've seen the product, uh, sometimes we're prone to drought in this area, and we've seen a lot better drought tolerance and a better root system in some of our, we use the Monty's a lot on our worst soils so it helps a lot with the, you know, low organic matter soils and helps the root, roots do a lot better growing and reaching out to get what they need. Monty's has been a really good return on our investment for what we've used it for. Um, I'd recommend it to anybody to use, especially on your poor soils and your, your soils that need a little help or if you just started farming some soils, it, it seems like it really helps the poor soils more than the, the well-producing soils. We had, uh, right behind us, we had a field that we we sort of, we farmed it for years, but we had to move some topsoil around and we to put a building up. So what we saw when we started using, before we used the Monty's, we would end up every year chopping about an acre or so of that field just because it didn't, it didn't get a root growth. It didn't, you know, it would dry up quicker. And as soon as we started using the Monty's, we've seen how that, what we've chopped has diminished. So now we're only down to, you know, it's, we're chopped maybe a tenth of an acre just around the outside edge but we're still dealing with the compaction issue, but it's definitely helping and it helps loosen up the soil tremendously. When we dig up our roots, especially in those compacted areas, we see where they're really branching out more and they're really, you know, they're not hitting that hard plow pan like we used to have and they're, they're definitely a lot more vigorous and a lot more thicker roots and they're going down in the soil and getting what they need a lot easier. I guess what we've seen since using the Monty's in our worst soil, worst case scenarios, uh, we've seen anywhere between 10 to 15 bushel better in our yields using the Monty's products. Yeah. Wow, great video there. Boys, you can't wait to get to the harvest. you got to get the <laughs> yeah. ground, put it in the yeah. ground first, but it's, that harvest video is always great. That's a great video there, Joe. Thanks yeah. for sharing. Reggie, uh, you can relate to a lot of what we heard in that video, I'm sure, in your place, your farm in uh, Carolina. Yes, sir. Uh, a lot of the same similarities. The one thing that seems like it's becoming more and more prevalent to uh, to be profitable nowadays is you have to farm more and more acres, mm -hmm. which means that you have less ideal days to be out in the field. So soil compaction is going to be something that we are dealing with just because you have to sometimes plant when it's not perfect or you have to harvest when it's not. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have compaction. So this is uh, just a tool that we have that you can combat the problem, whereas if you just leave it alone, it's just going to continue to get worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm but it's not something that you can use one time and fix the problem and, and think that it's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take another call. We're going to go to the big red state, Nebraska, is our next caller. This is Charles. Hi, Charles. Hi. Go ahead. Yeah, we farm in uh, eastern Nebraska, and we have a lot of heavy soil uh, on the Missouri River bottom, mm. and uh, we run big heavy equipment combines and grain carts, and we do some deep till on part of it. I was wondering, will this replace any of this tillage that we're doing or not? Well, Charles, thanks for the call. It, it might over time, but you're going to actually have to, to get it worked into the soil and it has to go down uh, as deep as you're tilling, which will take 
a few years. It, it doesn't mm -hmm. just happen overnight, but truly uh, it can uh, change your soil structure and your soil texture, and it will begin to uh, help relieve some of that issues that you're dealing with with tillage. But again, the, the, the worse the soil, then put a little bit more on and you'll get faster results quicker. So just experiment with it. Uh, with, that's all we ask farmers to do is just try it. So thanks for the call. Yeah, absolutely. And we can't cover all the ground. We're going to be talking more about the products here mm -hmm. real quick. But when we take a break here, Joe, uh, Monty'sPlantFood.com website is a great place for a oh, lot yes. of information. Talk about that. We do. We, we continue to populate it with more and more videos such as the one you just saw. Uh, we have, I don't know, I think it's eight or ten more that we, we're going to add over the next few weeks. Uh, we've got a lot of great information on there as well as uh, uh, some of our uh, testimonies. So it's a really good site for uh, you know getting information from that will help you with a lot of the farming situation. And we love to have you on RFD TV and Rural America Live, but you're going to yes. be out and about here. You've got a, your own uh, your, your farm forum, yes. you call it, yes. at the National Farm Machinery Show. The, this week is our National Farm Machinery Show, the largest show under roof in North America. Uh, that's a really big show for us. Lots and lots of farmers come in from all over the country as well as around the world. But we also conduct a farm forum that, where we invite about uh, roughly 200 of our dealers and farmers and, and some of their customers in. And we, we really base it on education because even this year our, our whole theme is about soil health, cover crops, uh, what difference does that make in, in your farming operation. So we're again about educating the farmer how he can, can improve his soils and thus improve his yields. And, and we're actually in a new booth at the Nar National Farm Machinery Show. We're going to be in the South Wing this year, which is a whole lot brighter area. It's a whole lot more uh, populated. So we're excited about being in the, in the South Wing booth this year. Very good. National Farm Machinery Show this week. Look for Joe Dedman and the great folks at Monty's Plant Food. They'll be at the Commodity Classic in Phoenix as well. If you're planning on that later on in the month, uh, Joe will be yeah. there. And we'll talk about that and more about their products, a long line of products. One more brand new product they're going to be introducing tonight for the first time anywhere on Rural America Live. So lots to do. Your telephone calls included 877 731 6733. We want to hear from you. We'll be right back after this. Yes. And welcome back to Rural America Live, more with Monty's Plant Food. I'm Mark Oppold. We've been spending time tonight talking about the successes of Monty's products, especially Monty's Liquid Carbon, how they're contributing to soil health around the country. Lines are open for your questions to our panel. We're joined by Joe Dedman, Chris Brown back with us, and Reggie Baker from North Carolina as well. And Joe, we spent quite a bit of time talking about uh, corn, uh, soybeans, and, yes. and but uh, these cattle producers out there in pastures, we want to, we bring that up because our next video kind of speaks, and we already had a, at least yes. one call about pasture and grass. Yeah, that, they kind of fall into a neglected <laughs> group, even though they're probably some of the most acres uh, farmed in the United States is a lot of pastures. And our product really complements pastures, uh, especially with these higher Cattle prices that's going on, and, and farmers are really trying to rotate cattle. Uh, it complements the soil health, which in turn, of course, allows them to manage that pasture All a right. lot better. Let's take a look. My name's Leland Glass. I live in Highsville, Kentucky, which is in Barron County. We farm around 2,000 acres. Uh, we raise around 300 acres of corn. Uh, some of that goes to silage. The majority of it goes for grain. We have uh, 857 mama cows. Uh, our main priority is in the beef. I guess I first heard about Monty's probably five or six years ago. I guess I've been using it for four years and I've been really impressed with it year after year. The main application I use is dry carbon. I use it in my fertilizer when I fertilize the pastures. I like the granular especially because of its ease of use. Uh, we order it from Monty's in a 50 pound bag. Uh, we put it in the fertilizer as we blend the fertilizer for the pastures. Uh, and you can visually see it on the fertilizer. It, it, it turns the fertilizer uh, a charcoal color or black color. Uh, and it's just easy to use. You pour it in, it's blended. You apply it with a fertilizer buggy or a fertilizer truck, and it's there. Uh, and the 
environment and the water and the moisture activates it. The reason I use carbon is uh, Larry asked me to use it on one field, to uh, use it on half the field and see if I seen a difference the following fall. And in the following fall, after I'd used it on half of this field for pasture, uh, the pasture on the side of the field that I used it on lasted three weeks to four weeks longer than the other side. Monty's is definitely a good return. I don't work for Monty's, but I do use their product and I do sell their product in a business that, that I operate. Uh, and, it, and I see a return wherever we apply it. If you want to just try half of a field, try half of a field and, and, and mark it. And then I say, well, no, I'll take that back. You don't even have to mark it. If you can't tell a difference next year, then you probably don't need the product. But I haven't had anybody that, that we've sold the product to that doesn't come back and buy the product. Actually, we've had some customers to come in and say, you know, whatever you put in my neighbor's fertilizer, you know, I want some of that in mine. And you can't get no better than, than customers telling other customers about it. And, and you know, and, and seeing results. And it especially works good in tobacco. It works good in soybeans. It works good in alfalfa. Actually, there's, I've not found any place that where we're trying to grow a crop or produce a pasture or produce hay that the results are not visual. Great information there. And Joe, it kind of leads us into that Monty's has a long a line of great products for whatever situation might be out there. That's, that's right. And, and like I've told you before, we've designed products to try and meet a farmer's needs and challenges and solutions. And, you know, like we have on the screen, we have Agrihance V product that, that really works well on, on vegetative growth stages. One of our newest products been out two or three years now is a Microhance, and that's really uh, gaining some really great recognition with farmers. One of the issues that farmers are dealing with is sulfur. Mm -hmm. So we have our Sulfur 15 product. And then we also have many farmers that actually uh, give a lot of promotion to adding sugar to their spray time. And so we have a product that has 30% 30 <laughs> 30 sugar in it. Yeah. And then of course our, our Nano Boost product, it, we can talk a little bit about later, but it's, it's one of our weed uh, boosters. It helps kill, it helps chemicals react a lot better on weeds. So. Great line of products. We, we continue to try and provide products that provide solutions to farmers. And we have a producer here from North Carolina. Reggie, you see the big, and you know all about the lineup of Monty's foods, uh, plant foods products. Uh, from a producer standpoint, uh, talk about how you look and pick and choose uh, how they fit your operation. Well, um, the first thing that's very important as a producer is we want it to handle easily and mix easily so that we can tank mix it with other products. Um, that's the wonderful, one thing that we really like about the Monty's products is they, as far as we know, and we've had up to five to six different things in the tank, it will mix with anything. It doesn't antagonize with anything. So it really is uh, something that you can try without a whole lot of effort. And because, we're, we're worry. Yes, sir. Because when somebody comes onto my farm and they want me to try something, but it takes a separate trip all by itself, I have the cost of, of the trip and my time. So whenever we can tank mix and uh, piggyback that product with something else, it's just a whole lot easier to uh, talk me into using that <laughs> or my brother who does a lot of the spraying. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's really, really key. Mm -hmm. So Chris from AgView FS there in Illinois, uh, the lineup of products from Monty, someone like Reggie comes in, how do you help that person? Well, what's nice about Monty's is with this lineup of products, they help help me provide the answers to my customers mm -hmm. for the questions that they have. Uh, a lot, like he was saying, a great uh, handling properties of the products, as well as as we move along, new problems come up. Uh, like recently, we've seen a lot of sulfur deficiencies show up. So that's sulfur mm -hmm. 15, and it's a versatile product that we can use any time, any trip that we're making. So we don't have to mm -hmm. make a separate trip for that, and that just really helps us out. Yeah. 
And, and Joe, uh, people were with us at the beginning of the program. We said, and we thank you again, that uh, Monty's are bringing us two brand new products. First time anywhere, yes. uh, introducing it here on RFD TV and Sirius XM Channel 82 pro uh, products. We, we introduced the first one earlier. Yes. Uh, you have a new one, a second one, uh, and tell us about the new name and why. We're very excited to announce a, a product that we've just brought to market. It's called K28. So it's a 0028 product. It's a liquid potash product. And we have, talking to farmers over the last several years, have found out there is lots of potash deficiency. And, and in order to put on dry fertilizer, it's going to take maybe days and weeks because it depends upon the rain to make it available to the plant. However, you could go out and foliar feed this product or in many cases, they can even add it in the furrow uh, when they plant or in their two by two. And, and we're only talking <clears throat> one to two quarts to the acre. Uh, so it's a very usable product. And, and like a lot of the, our other products, this has a little bit of our humix in it. Many times it's not enough to show on a label, but it does make a difference in the product. Mm -hmm. Producer, what do you think about K28, hearing about it? I heard about it first this afternoon, so I'm I'm uh, I'm ready to <laughs> You're use ready to go it. use it, huh? I'm ready to about, use see, it. How about yeah, that's that? great. <laughs> we that's had great. A, so but again it makes sense. Potash is that an issue in the Carolinas? Yes, sir. We are in an area where we do a lot of double cropping. Once we uh, harvest the wheat we come back in with soybeans and we uh, the wheat stubble we get a lot of potash from it, but anytime you can kinda use a foliar, mm -hmm. like he said, the speed of it is gonna get in there quicker and mm -hmm. the quicker the better mm -hmm. in our situation. K-28 in Illinois, Chris, are you excited? Yes, uh, one thing that uh, I can see it being used in, we're, we have some uh, acres that are coming out of long-term corn on corn production, and sometimes on fertilizing for corn on corn, you don't use as much potash. Mm -hmm. Going into those bean acres, you're gonna, see, gonna need that extra potash, mm -hmm. and it's a great fit. Mm -hmm. We are about three minutes before we have to start wrapping up, and we promised each one of you ample time for closing thoughts. So, Chris, we're going to start right back with you here from AgView FS of North Central Illinois. Thanks for being with us. Uh, your closing thoughts tonight. Well, thanks again for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a great opportunity. Uh, Montes has provided us with a lot of good uh, solutions to some issues we face every day. I'd like growers to look at some of their products, contact their local retailers, and try to work through what fits on their farms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say you represent Illinois, a couple of counties, big counties there, there are a lot of land, but uh, there are lots of Chris's around the country, FS for one, any, any FS, but there are dealers all around the country that can answer their questions, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good, good to have you here. Have a Thank safe you. trip back. Reggie, good to have you here from North Carolina. Thanks for joining us. Your closing thoughts from yes, a producer sir. standpoint. Thank you all for having us. Uh, what I would like to tell is uh, producers that even though corn is an eight or $9, soybean isn't 15 or 14, you still need to use on your farm where you're going to get a return on investment. If it makes money, it makes money. And if you go to skimping and not taking care of your soil, it's going to cost you. And it may cost you two years from now when the prices have come back. So my thing on our farm, what we're going to use is if it works, we're going to use it regardless of the price, because it's just as important to make a crop at $4 corn as it is at $8 corn. Wow, well That's said. Right. Thank you very True. much. Good to have you here. Joe, you have about a minute to go here. Your last word. You know, we've really enjoyed being here again tonight. It, it, our guests have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're all hit on the right thing, that you know, farmers won't return on investment. And, and I've, it's like I've told you before, and I know this is hard to believe for our viewers that's listening and, and watching is, Anytime you add our liquid humic product to what you're doing, it complements what you're doing and makes it work better. So if, if there is one product that farmers need to continue to take a look at, and that is our liquid carbon product along with maybe our microhants and some of the few others that will contribute to the return on their investment even in low commodity prices because that's the bottom line. We got to make money and, and Monty's is determined to continue to provide those needs. Great. Well said, too. Joe, good to have you back. Thank you very much. Safe travels north of uh, the uh, yeah. National Farm yeah. Machinery yeah. Show and Commodity Classic as well. Monty'sPlantFood.com. <laughs> Write that down. Or call Monty's. There are operators standing by after our show. 800-978-6342. They will be there to answer your questions. 800-978-6342. Have a great growing season. I'm Mark Offel. Thanks for joining us. Good night.